Hey there, welcome back to Travels with Jordy. This is a big day. I'm at the uh, Victoria Classic Wooden Boat Festival and we're surrounded by all these gorgeous boats and our boats aren't here this year because, well, as you know, they're kind of get a lot of work done. But the big thing that happened this weekend is we hit a thousand subscribers. Thank you all. We're at a thousand and ten or something now. It's going good. Thus, I'm wearing my Travels with Jordy shirt. Um, so I'm trying to figure a way to give away a couple of these shirts. And I think what I'll do is put like um, an Easter egg in the video somewhere, like some way that you got to find something, probably Jordy. So let's just say that's what I'm going to do. Somewhere in this video, later on, there's going to be Jordy that you haven't seen before. I don't know how I'm going to do it exactly, but when you see him, figure out when that was, take the time code, describe what you saw, and I'll send you off a shirt. I don't know how many, let's say five. Okay, so the first five people to message me and let me know where they saw Jordy, get a shirt. So anyway, we're screaming out of uh, Victoria Harbor here. We have the legislature over on this side. Pretty cool spot. This is Labor Day weekend in Victoria and the Wooden Boat Festival over here. I mean, it would just be a fantastic day. I got my good buddy Ryan at the camera here. So that's why I've got actually both hands free here. You can see what I'm actually doing. Let's tool across some of the boats here and uh, you'll see what we can see. Things a bit crazy in here today. I just came back from the lumber yard. It's a dry day, which means it's my one of my few opportunities to run to the lumber yard because my truck is open, etc. Um, on this bench, my little two foot by four foot piece of plywood, I have six sheets of white masonite. Masonite, not exactly a marine product, I know, but. The total surface area for the overheads, not ceilings, overheads, uh, is just under six sheets of plywood or six times 96 square feet or whatever. It's a massive area. I'd love to do it in beadboard. I'd love to do it, you know, a little more sophisticated than I have in mind. Uh, for now, it's going to be one foot strips because the uh, deck beams are one foot apart. One foot strips of white masonite. Um, and I pray the cabin top doesn't leak because masonite doesn't like water at all. Anyway, uh, so what I've done is I've clamped them all together and uh, I'm just going to cut them into strips six at a time. It's only three cuts. <laughs> we'll see how well that turns out. Um, I don't know how long the battery on my circular saw will last. I also have three sheets of, um, you can't see from this side, Luan underlayment, which is basically door skin um poor man's mahogany some things i can do exactly the way i want to and some things i have to succumb to my budget and uh that's one of them i gotta keep moving Last few minutes of light uh see what i can get done here these short days wow um down there maybe you can see 22 one foot wide strips of white masonite i left one two foot wide strip um, because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to deal with up here where there's actually a compound curve. Um, yeah, I, the cabin top is almost flat. I mean, very close to flat. Um, it sheds water in that direction, not that direction. And had a fairly sharp radius at the corner. I gotta tell you, even though it's the styling of the 1953 boat, I just don't like that. I want one constant radius. Um, like an older boat would have and so what I've done I've gone up into the parking lot with my long tape measure and I calculated an arc giving me a two and a quarter inch um, drop would be 38 feet draw a big big, drew a big arc on here and I'll use that for a template to set up the um, the uh, battens uh, sort of the stringers I'm going to put up here to create that curve anyway we'll get started with that um, not quite sure how well that'll go, but, uh, yeah, let's get on it then. Cheers. Beauty! There's my arc. So there we go. What's that look like? Nice. Nice. Now I'll have to put a little screw in here so I can attach it and then build what I'm going to do is I'm going to run strips along the existing um, beams in this direction fore and aft 
about all different thicknesses. Of course, the masonite is only eight feet long and it's about eight foot six at the widest point here. It's even wider in the aft cabin. So I'm gonna have a strip of mahogany that comes along here as a closure strip. Um, the other huge advantage of that is it gives me an easy to open wire chase because by the time I get here, this huge arc here uh, from the existing uh, deck beams gives me a nice big void that I can use as a wire chase uh, rather than having to drill holes all through which has already been done and I'm only going to chase wires on the side and then just fish them further in if I have to come down for lights or up for anything else so I shouldn't have to take down the overheads too often anyway I'm liking it let's see how it looks in place actually I'm probably not going to get that much more done because I've got about 10 minutes left of light I think it's just clean up clean up for a bit yeah okay good morning back at it and I'm just getting ready to laminate some um, basically uh, Marente um, door skin uh, onto the Douglas fir plywood of the head and so what I'm doing I'm just taking a carbide scraper you know my favorite carbide scraper and scraping off all the old contact cement that had held on the uh, well it wasn't contact cement the glue for the white vinyl wallpaper anyway and I'm going to take this curve off the corner now that may seem sacrilegious uh, very 1950s styling um, I keep it if it was mahogany and if I was using thin veneer mahogany I could do it easily but I, I can't wrap quarter inch um, plywood around the corner so can't really do that um, I'm okay with that. Again, the style of the boat is switching sort of from 1950s uh, slope front plinth type look to uh, more of a mission style, arts and crafts style. So the curb corners don't really work anyway. Okay, so let me keep scratching this off and uh, get some new wood on here. So how about a quick update? Um, haven't shot a lot of video in the last little while because uh, I'm going flat out. I do have three panels up on the ceiling. Really excited about that. As you can see, I've, uh, instead of creating arcs this way, I think I showed you, I put a template in, I just put um, three different thicknesses of um, longitudinal pieces in, and this one's on blocks, and it has to be quite a bit more secure because it has to hold an edge train piece, uh, which I'll tell you more about in a little bit. But anyway, three panels up. I love the curve, I love the way it's gonna work, and I gotta put some uh, mahogany strips on them as well. Okay, uh, that's going good. This is the beginning of the roughing in of a chase. This is going to be the headboard of the bed. Basically, the bed is going to be here. Headboard, it'll be white beadboard. But I need to create a chase in here for the upstairs helm. Um, these plugged holes and plugged properly above are the old wires and cables and steering gear from the upstairs helm. Um, I'm going to simplify that somewhat and I'm going to switch to uh, cable steering rather than chain and drive shaft. So the cable is going to come through, that's why this one is sloped down along there and it'll end up being a shiv pulley just below that stringer and back. I don't know if you can see that. So anyway, I wanted this in to have a clear idea of my spacing. Oh, this will go half inch plywood and then vertical um, V-joint. Over on the bathroom side, I've um, put the uh, mahogany plywood on, really Marente or Luan or whatever you want to call it, it'll do. It looks okay. By the time it's stained, it'll look just fine. Put on my contacts mitt so it's nice and solid. I'm just now refinishing the door frame, which is <laughs> very similar. I'm sure by the time they're stained, it'll be very hard to tell the difference between those two. That's gone well. Corner is now square. There'll be some trim pieces that go out here to make that look nice and neat. And that went well. Um, at this point, it's hustling, sanding, scraping, uh, getting the place looking half decent. I have now nine days until my daughter's arrive for Christmas. And you're going to sleep on that bed. The bed that's not there. Yeah. Okay, enough chatting. More sanding. See ya. I gotta work here. Go on, go on, do something else. Okay, so I'm staining that wall with the magic formula. Uh, one quart, or whatever the large can is, 946 milliliters, of... Um, the mahogany red to one pint of the Sonoma red in the Minwax uh, oil stain line. Again, I know these are not marine stains, but I'm familiar with them and they work well for me. And uh, it's what I've used in the wheelhouse. Now, it doesn't look right there because it's covered with dust. Um, and it does lose some of its red in the UV. Um, so here I'm putting it on here and 
guys. You gotta move quickly with the plywood because it soaks it in very, very quickly. So you gotta do it in, in strips. Um, it's gonna look fantastic. There's nothing that makes cheap Luan plywood look really a lot better than a reasonable stain job. Okay, gotta keep moving. So what I wanna show you is how I'm gonna waterproof this bulkhead. Um, this is the same uh, 3 8 by 3 inch Sapelli mahogany that I've been using everywhere. Um, on the bulkhead, I'm putting it vertically. Um, now, I'm relatively confident in the water shedding ability of the way I've put it everywhere else, but on the bulkhead, not only did I want the boards to look to be vertical for the look aesthetically, I think I can seal it even better by, I only chamfer the front edges, so the back sides of these are just square. So basically, 3 16 is still square, and then a 3 16 by 3 16 um, chamfer. And so, and I laid them up on the bulkhead about 3 16 apart, so there's a gap. That gap I'm going to fill with, um, sealant basically the same kind of rubber sealant that you put on a teak deck um, a very resilient high uv resistant sandable um, black sealant so what i'll do i'll pump it right in and uh, with caulking gun and then i'll tool it right away into largely the v that it sits in because it sits against that v and that v now i'm going to get black all over the sides of it that's okay because it's sandable so once that's basically hardened and cured enough which is not right away it takes a couple of days to be sandable i'll take a square block um, with sandpaper on it and set it in the v and clean out the edge again so that i'll get back to the wood on both sides and i'll cut a nice neat uh, v in the um in the uh caulking the sealant really um, that's my plan. We'll see how well that works. You'll notice I've already put oil on it before I put the sealant on. That's because I wanted the edges of the wood to be uh, sealed even before they got caulking. When I sand these edges to clean up the caulking, I will remove the oil again. I'll put some more oil on again. And um, probably a few coats before uh, I actually get to varnish again. Varnish is a key thing. I've got a couple more days of this good weather and I really should try to get some varnish on all this because if I can't keep putting oil on it all for the rest of the winter, I'll be able to refinish it again in the spring, which I'd really rather not do having done quite a bit of that. So anyway, so now you know how this is supposed to work. Back out in the cockpit, trying to take advantage of the last of this light. Uh, the forecast has changed. We're running out of sunny days. Tomorrow will be dry, but not sunny. And I have to go up to the lumber yard to get the remaining mahogany for the interior. So I need to deal with all this caulking I put on the bulkhead here. Now, I don't need to. I could sort of leave it, but I want to. So um, cleaning off at least the caulking off the face of the planks. What I can do about in the Vs just yet, I'm not quite so sure. I may leave that till the spring to deal with that. Um, it's certainly sealed, it's waterproof, it's just not going to look as pretty as it should. Uh, sand it again this side, this cabin side, I've sanded this a couple of times, but it's only ever had um, just very, very slight protection on it. So what I'm doing, um, again, you can see that the black caulking is still in the Vs, even on the face of the Vs, which I'd like to sand it off in time, but I may play with that a little bit, I may not, <laughs> but I definitely want it off the surface. So what I'm doing, I don't know if I can show you, can't find my tripod, it's in a mess somewhere. Taking my handy dandy a carbide scraper. I'm gonna change hands. And uh, basically I can just carve off into little strips the bulk of the caulking that is on the face of the, uh, of the planks. Now I wanna be careful. It's sort of tempting to go only on one plank at a time, but if I roll over, I'll cut that sharp edge of the uh, of the V and I really do not want to do that okay so this works pretty well very very pleased with it actually um, and then I just go over that with sander sand the face of that off and I'll get some more oil on this today or tomorrow and lots of oil and we'll call that protected until spring probably anyway let's keep moving that's the main thing cheers wow I'm really happy about this so I've sanded the face of it all the way along, sanded the most of the other side of that uh, cabin side. So I thought I'd have a stab at sanding out the um, chamfers. And so I made a sanding block um, with a chamfer on it. In other words, a little flat on one corner. 
and I'm just taking sanding discs which is great because I can just rotate them around to get a new section and uh, just sanding straight in these grooves and it seems to be working just great um, of course I only have about 20 minutes left of light so I gotta keep moving I'd love to get some oil on this but I think I probably won't it's gonna be cloudy tonight which means we shouldn't have too much of a dew and uh, I may have to put heater on all this to let it uh, get it dry enough tomorrow that I can oil it okay um, that's as far I've sanded it to here the channels I realize I can't get oil on tonight because the dew is just starting to fall it's starting to get damp so there's no way I'm going to get uh, any oil on here tonight therefore there's no sense in me continuing to sand because tomorrow is a dry day if not a sunny day I do have to do a lumber uh, run uh, so there's half the day gone but uh, I, I can easily get this looked after sorted out and protected before the rains come feeling really good about it okay so i'm going like a bat out of hell today um last dry day for weeks maybe all winter and last hour of that dry day spent most of it uh, going to the lumber yards getting wood did manage to get this sanded especially down in between onto the chamfers uh leaving just the um the caulking rubber in the actual gaps between the planks and oiled the sides re-oiled i'm just loving it i'm really really pleased with the way that looks um that obviously is going to take a lot more oil and then varnish in the spring there's the coho love that boat anyway um i still like to be able to put a trim piece on here before the weather comes but that's all caulked so it should be okay so this is pretty much under control the thwarts are made i just have to varnish them but I can varnish them because I can do them inside. Um, that's what $700 worth of mahogany looks like. Uh, so it's just come. Uh, most of it is straight grain. This piece isn't all that brilliant. But that should be enough to do the bulk of the cabinetry in the wheelhouse. Maybe. Um, but anyway, it's enough to keep me busy for a while. That and uh, four sheets of plywood, which just came. I'm telling you, it's getting hard to keep track of wood. Here is the last, this is still sticky, of the uh, overhead panels that have been, um, we've put uh, varathane on the back sides of it. And I'm very grateful because there's a lot of pieces and I had some help with that. So that went really well. And uh, this is going to go really well once I get it all put back up. Plus in here, more plywood. Looking, trying to get sheets. Um, huh. Four by eight sheets of plywood into a boat is a bit of a trick and then handle them. But anyway, so two sheets of three quarter inch ply to build the bed and two sheets uh, to deal with this and a couple of other lightweight cabinets. I was going to build the galley um, before my daughters get here for Christmas. Can't pull it off. I'm just going to have a piece of plywood with a sink and the stove. It'll be functional, but I can't really get that done. Um, the head has been refinished. All good. I need a trim piece on the corner. I just have to finish sanding and staining and varnishing the door, which uh, will be finished up tonight. Um, well, there's tons and tons to do, but that's what I'm going to try and get done today. And then, of course, tomorrow I start refinishing all the interior of the cabin sides and window trim in the aft cabin. Yeah, not much to do. I have five days. And we stain. Okay, I'm going to let that set up just a little bit. Um, basically, it'll start to thicken and it'll be a little harder to rub. Uh, it's cool. It's a little bit damp, so it's not going to happen fast. So basically, I'm going to have a beer and then uh, come back and rub it out a little bit. You'll be here, right? <laughs> 